Howdy, howdy. <coughs> All right, so it's a Friday, 11 a.m., and I'm gonna. Uh, I need to do some painting. I need a little bit of my, me time. It's been work was this week has been extremely hectic, and I haven't had like a moment to myself. So I'm I'm taking the next hour just for me. Screw it. The world can wait. All right. So uh, where's the camera thing? Oh yeah. Top down. All right. So I've got a new canvas. This one is 18 by 24, and another one of these really nicely built. This is a Canvas Jack, the brand. Curry's is the, company, the, uh, the Toronto Art Star. That actually really like. They, they tend to be a little pricey, but they also have a very good selection, which saves me time and money in the long run. Uh, the only problem is they're, <coughs> they're a bit of a drive out of my way. They're right across town. Is this thing filming? I know, they're right across town, so they're not exactly convenient. I only go there when I need to do a big shop, so I'll go there and I'll do a, a big spend on a whole ton of paints and canvases. I only buy the only I only buy the canvases less than thirty by forty because that's all I could fit in my car. I can't buy anything larger. So, see this little dent here? If you can see that, yeah, you can see it. That's pretty easily fixed by a little bit of dabbing with water. That should it'll it'll dry out and then tighten up. You sort of have to just gently massage it. Best way is use spray bottle and it gives it evenly. But I got the fingers, I got the touch. You just can feel it. Okay. So today, I'm going to do another, some more sky porn. And I really just feel like just whoo, letting just things go. Letting just things go. All the stress and worries about things just whoo, goodbye. I'm just letting you flow out of me. As I let the coffee flow in. <laughs> so, I think I'm gonna use this nice brush here. Is it the top down view? Okay. Now, I have so many paints that are just barely used up <clears throat> that I should. I keep on saying, I'm gonna use them up, I use them up. But the problem is, as I paint, I'm kind of like impatient. And I want what I want, like right now, and I often don't go digging through the the little the ones. <coughs> I don't go digging through the uh, scrappy little paints, like things like this. I don't. I get lazy and say, "Screw it! I'm just gonna go with the go with what I got in front of me." Okay, so what I'm doing here is I'm just experimenting a little bit. I'm tr this time I'm trying a whole bunch of different colors for a wash behind. And I don't know why. I just... I don't know. I just go with the flow. Go with the flow. This is my ones... The one place thing in the world that I feel completely at home with. That's it, man. Well, there's just, you know, maybe a couple other little things, like playing with my dog. That's about as perfect as it gets. A couple other things, but that's probably all I'm going to admit. Loud. Oh, look at this. It really didn't even... <laughs> All those colors didn't really 
I was I thought it was going to have a much more dramatic impact. I thought for sure those <laughs> oranges and yellows were going to let me zoom in a bit. We're going to really punch through, but they're they're it's all turning into pretty monochromatic. Let's just for fun. Let's just grab some of this yellow, <clears throat> slap it on there. <clears throat> just see if it has an impact. Yeah, it's got it's so I, yeah. Okay, so here's an observation about these oil paints. Now, this might have always been the case. I'm just really conscious of it now, but. Maybe, or maybe it's just these water-based oils. I don't know, but they definitely come on dark. They come on darker than I'm expecting. I guess, I think with acrylics, you're going to get... That's not true, because acrylics always come off dark when they dry. But these ones, I, you notice, I think they come on... As soon as I apply them, I think that's the difference. They, they, they are darker, darker than I would expect them. What is... No, what I'm trying to get is the darker colors maintain their their saturation quite strongly with very little paint maybe that's just what i'm trying to say and it requires a good look at that see like where's where's that that crazy orange that was right here it's just all blended through and through isn't that weird oh hi kim hello it's actually my friend kim's birthday today I won't say who she is, her last name, because she's been going through some tough times. She had uh, cancer very strongly, and I believe she had to have a double mastectomy, mastectomy when you have to remove your breasts. And she's an awesome person. She's such a, I'm, I'm always amazed how much energy she, <coughs> she has, like she's like a, always so outgoing and always so friendly and I'm kind of lucky to be friends with her through a friend because I'm not I'm not social like I am I wouldn't say I'm anti-social but I just don't like being around groups of people at all so like my friend Kim every year would still invite me to their Christmas party and I would like dread going because I hate being around a lot of people and I hate all the noise and my fucking ears hurting and but I'm still so grateful to be to be to be asked. I think that's something weird about introverts, maybe, is that we don't like to be around people, but we're still grateful <laughs> to be asked to join, even though like 99% of the time I'll I'll turn down an offer. Also, like so, there's there's even a guy who was a former student who's now a colleague, and he's a super awesome guy, and I'd love to hang out with him. But the, honestly, I just don't. The idea of going somewhere out for a, like a beer at a pub, it just that's like fucking torture for me. As much as I like the people, it's just I just like quiet. I need quiet. I need to be alone. I, I my perfect relationship is is hanging out with somebody and not talking. <laughs> like being in the same room. Someone's over there doing what they're doing. I'm over here doing what I'm doing. And that to me is a perfect moment. No communication. Like you don't know, you know, I'll let me get you some tea, you know, or or hey, I'm gonna make dinner. Does that sound good? Okay, great. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> no more talking. Unless unless this is about something really deep. I like like deep and interesting conversations. I can't do small talk. It kills me. Fuck. Alright. I'm stalling a little bit because I'm just trying to make this thing dry. Okay, so okay, so I've got some general ideas for, for what I want to do. Uh, kind of like like this one again, big sky. I just don't know yet if it's gonna be like cumulus cloud one. Or one that has more of like this crazy pattern. Like that was kind of neat. That sort of happened where I kind of had this idea of like imagine all the lines flowing and curving up. And, and that's what it became. And right now in this moment, it's like the spark of life 
it's literally you're about to throw the the sperm and the egg together for creation or the electricity and the primordial primordial soup is just about to happen and i'm looking at it this is kind of cool this is kind of like this is the moment of creation <laughs> I don't mean to be so dramatic or whatever, but this is that's where I'm at right now. I'm at right where anything can happen. Anything, something totally different can happen. I kind of got got to get into like a Zen state. I kind of just sort of let everything go. Nothing matters. Oh, I got to do more meditation, man. Like just even just deep breathing for a few seconds right there, man, just felt so good. <sighs> okay, I'm going to steal some ideas. Maybe. Maybe. What if I tried a contrast of blues and yellows? I guess that's blues and yellows. Hmm. No, but... A much, like I wonder if I could pull this off. What if, what if it was very cool down here? And I also, what if I broke up that horizontal and so I didn't do that same thing across? I was just doing it because, but maybe this time I'll do it like, oh yeah, that big painting I'm working on, the Asylum Seeker, has these big kind of islands. So it's, instead of a horizon across, it's more like, there. It's a little different across the bottom. I'm just trying to find some paint. So, so damn, I need to do. Okay, what color should I use? Let's try this brown. Is that brown? Burnt umber. I always like that name, burnt umber. It just sounds cool. Okay, so what if? Here's what I'm kind of thinking. Like, there's like a. I gotta think of where the horizon is, because if there's gonna be an island, I'm thinking of like Lake of Ace. <clears throat> there are these islands, there's one called Pancake Island, Haystack Island, where I grew up as a kid. And P Pancake Island had a swing on it. We used to always swing off in the water. Huh. So, do these match? How would, would it be like this? And would it be, would it be something like that? And then would there also be something in the background? There probably would be like some kind of, oh, um, how do I hide that? Oh, maybe I don't need to hide it. Maybe I'll just go like this. And yeah, maybe there's another hill here. Okay, whatever. So some sort of, that's kind of weird. Okay, if I'm going to do this, huh. I'm, going to I'm, I'm going to stick with my uh, reflection-y things. So, okay, so I kind of have, whoops, where is it? Right over here. I kind of have this kind of a, some kind of composition. I don't know. Amor Accor Vermela. Accor. No, Amor Accor Vermela. Fuck, Italian is such a cool language. Amor Accor Vermela. <laughs> You know what's funny? The one thing I can think of in Italian is the is the phrase I can speak a little Italian. That's that's the irony because I can't speak Italian anymore. I, I I spent a little time in Italy like a summer. Io parlo un poco italiano. Which means I can speak a little Italian. But the re but I actually can't. You know no. You 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 parlo un poco italiano. Io no, no parlese, parlese italiano. Hey, Tamara, what's, what's up, Tamara? 
tomorrow. <clears throat> tomorrow was a friend of my sister when they were little kids. And the other thing I remember, do you remember Val Desire? My sister Tammy, who I think was friends with Tamara. Do you remember Val Desire was a was a guy that my sister liked, and I and they were kind of like boyfriend girlfriend a little bit. And I love Val Desire because he gave me all of his Hot Wheels race tracks, which I still have today downstairs in the basement. And we're talking, I probably was like, I don't know, 10 years old. And, and no, I was, because my sister's about three years older than me. So maybe she, I was maybe 11 or 12. I don't know. How old would I would have been? I was excited about the racetracks. I literally have them all downstairs. And, you know, Val Desire, what kind of, isn't that weird? I still remember that guy's name. Was just so pumped because he gave me those. Like that was like yeah, you wanna you wanna make your the girl you likes little brother happy? <laughs> you get him some used freaking Hot Wheels tracks. <laughs> now that was the 80s, man, so that was cool. That was totally badass. And I probably even have a Dukes of Hazard car. I probably I had that was my favorite thing. I I would string up racetracks all over my parents' basement and use duct tape and stuff and make loop to loops and just Move the Hot Wheels around with your fingers. Okay, <clears throat> now, what are we going to do here? We have all the possibilities. Why does my... I like the sun right here. For some reason, I like, like the light source here. It just feels good. It feels like happy right here. Okay, I don't want to copy too... Have I done this before? Maybe I have... Actually, no. Okay, so I haven't done this composition that I can see because I was kind of thinking. And then look at this. I love me some cumulus clouds, whatever the hell they're called, up here. Oh, and then maybe a couple weird things breaking away like that. Where's my, I need a bit of paint because I, yeah, maybe I'll do that. Well, maybe the sun's going to be here. And then, oh, am I going to, maybe, maybe, yeah, there's something. What kind of color can I paint with? Let's just use this. Hmm. Hmm. So I'm trying to like. Okay, I'm not getting any paint coming off this. How can I? If the sound effects aren't going to be good unless I can see the, the results. God damn it. So this brush pissing me off. Blow my nose. Drink some coffee. Get a brush. Get some white. All right, what am I going to do? Is this, oh, maybe this is going to be light down here. Oh, that could be interesting. Have I done that before? Oh, I kind of did that. Huh. Like I'm thinking, what if there's like the light, the light is like, is all kind of coming here. And then the light is catching the bottom of these clouds and then hiding off in the distance why do I feel like there's white in between hmm let me just think about this hmm <laughs> Here I come to save the day. What's that from? Some old timey cartoon. Mighty Mouse. Mighty Mouse. Here I come to save the day. Why did Mighty Mouse have an operatic voice? Okay, so. 
if this is going to be like light coming through, would it be better to have it dark up here and not have those bright clouds busting through? Should I make it dark, dark, dark? But I kind of like the light, light, light. I kind of like the light. I don't know why. I don't know why. But I'm going to do this. I might regret it later. Now I'm just following some of my brush strokes that I've already done. I'm gonna have to look, if I look at an angle, I don't know if you can see it, but is it, I did some quick brush strokes. So I'm just following their shapes now. Here I come to save the day, mighty mouse. Oh, sometimes you just need to just be yourself and not give a shit what anybody thinks. Oh, this was a hard week, man, dealing with putting out all kinds of fires and unnecessary people problems. Just unnecessary, silly bullshit. Fortunately, it comes with my character of what I have to do, and I'm pretty damn good at it. But I don't like to do it. It's not fun. It's not enjoyable. Dealing with people who are obnoxious <laughs> and having to be the, I'm the dip, try to be the diplomatic one. I try very hard, but some people test my patience these days. And these days, I'm I'm actually kind of, I'm I'm slipping into a, a mode where I'm like, you know what? Fuck it. This is not worth my time. You're not worth my time. I'm not going to take more of my mental energy anymore. I put in my years where I don't have to put up with people's bullshit anymore. And the thing is, it's not that I care so much people think. It's just that I don't want to be, you know, I try, I, I'm trying to leave the world in a better place than that I've brought to come into it. You know what I mean? Like I'm trying literally not to be a shit person because I could be a shitty person for sure. And that's only usually when, if, when I lose control, right? When you lose control of your emotions, you tend to act in ways that you, you probably regret. In the past, I've been pr usually pretty good about controlling that. But sometimes, you know, if you just get pushed too far, they just push, push too far. These days, I'm kind of getting pushed too far at something where I'm thinking, you know what? You know, I'm, I'm doing a lot of stuff out of the goodness of my heart. <laughs> you know, I don't need to do a lot of this stuff. So be careful because you might get what you wish for, which is you're on your own, pal. I think that's the problem when you, if you're a care, if you care a lot about things, your life is a lot harder. I've noticed, and that's what I'm trying to train myself to do is is, is to care less because usually I'm the one that gets hurt in the end when you care too much. So I'm being a bit more reserved now on how much I'm willing to to give out and I'm only going to give it to the people not even that just appreciate it that or even yeah just I guess appreciate is part of it but I don't know I don't know what the fuck I'm saying I'm just blab I'm just babbling blah 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 blue blah blue blah blue blah blue all right what, look at this little, little guy here waving. Hi, how's it going? Okay, so what I'm thinking is this is a crest of, of like this sun coming out from here. You feel that? 
breaking out. <laughs> Maybe I should break up this whole section. What color should it be here? I only have two colors. Oh, there. I kind of like the fact that this, this green is coming in here. That's kind of neat. So I just, I just happened. I don't know if you can see this. I was mixing this yellow. Oh, oh, and then this kind of murky green popped in here. Okay, I'm a little bit concerned because my uh, tennis has just kicked in to a higher level, and it's beginning to worry me a little bit. Shit. Oh, just when I'm starting to have fun. You son of a bitch. Okay, let's see if I can ignore it. I'm going to see if I can ignore it. Okay, maybe I'll bring in some of these blues that are happening over here. Because that is kind of, those colors are kind of nice. I don't know if you can see that painting back there. Oh, come on. Uh, things aren't going so well. Now, you really want to do that? I'm talking to my tennis. I'm going to start talking to my tennis just like it's a person. Maybe if I can, like, if I can, uh, fuck. If I can, uh, see, it blocks my thoughts. It goddamn blocks my thoughts. This is so frustrating. It literally, it's interfering with my thought process. It's stopping me from thinking. I had an idea in my head. I can still touch that idea, but I have trouble getting to it now. My idea is if I treat my tinnitus like it's a person, like it's a thing, Maybe I somehow, I can isolate it with my brain. I can like, I can tell it to back down. I'm gonna try that right now. Okay, Tentis, son of a bitch, you're pissing me off. You're not wanted, I want you to go away. That's not working. All right, Tentis, I know where you live, motherfucker. Don't fuck with me, Tentis. Oh, is that working? Okay, so... Whoa, oh, oh, this is really loud. This feels like... Uh, it was like, imagine you're in... Uh, oh, you're... How'd you get on the tarmac of the airport? You're on, and all the planes are, are, you're standing next to a jet plane. You know that, it would be an insane roar. It's kind of like that right now. It's very disturbing. I can get through this. I can do this. I can do this. I can do this. I can do this. So loud. So loud. 
<laughs> okay, just take a breath. Just take a breath. <sighs> God, I don't really don't like that. This feeling is not fun. All right, you fucker. You son of a bitch. All right. What about if I just... I'm just going to keep on going and keep on talking. I'm going to keep on going and I'm going to... Keep on talking. What can you do? Nothing you can do. There's nothing you can do. There's no escape. I can't walk away, so I'm just gonna have to deal with it. <sighs> yeah, I know what I can do. I can I can go into the I just meditate, take myself away from here. Alright, I'm just gonna go into a bit of a zone. <sighs> Go into his own. I think that's part of the problem. Is I've been pushing myself too hard with work. And uh, not giving enough time for myself. I was up to like 10.30 last night. Writing emails. To some fucking idiot. Who doesn't even deserve my attention. Why was I doing it? I was just I was just being professional. I was being professional responding to somebody who's just fucking so close-minded. <sighs> Wish I didn't care so much. I feel I just I feel I'm compelled to I can't just do a half-assed job. That's my problem. I feel I just can't I can't just sort of throw throw something out there. I have to do a good job. So even though I don't get paid for that shit, it's, it's stupid. It's just I have no one to blame but myself. So I'm going to take this time and I'm going to enjoy the fuck out of this. There's all these people waiting on me for information right now. You know what? You're going to have to fucking wait. Uh, you're just going to have to wait. Kiss my ass. I like that. Oh, thanks, Alita. Thank you. Wow, I can't believe I'm doing this in front of a camera. This is really... Well, I'm doing what I said I was going to do, which is... I'm going to step outside my comfort zone, which is, to me, be opening up myself like this to the goddamn fucking internet. So, I'm still... I'm proud of myself for doing this. Even though I fucking hate it. Yeah. I'm making more decisions based on, you know, let's say you're going to be fucking dead tomorrow. I think that's part of why I do the things the way they do. Like, even though I don't have to do most of the stuff I do, I kind of think that if I was to be dead, you know, what's going to be left over from, from the, the ashes? I don't know. I just don't want it to be that guy was selfish. Because I for sure can be selfish, you know? I can be selfish and I can be a jerk. I'm trying not to. Okay, this is looking nice. So that's that's kind of looking nice, isn't it? Okay. Let me think. Okay. Coming back a little bit. <sighs> Holy shit. So something just happened to me. And this happens frequently, unfortunately. Uh -uh. And the problem is, it's like a bit of amnesia. It's almost like... Yeah, it's like being stuck behind a jet airplane and you're so overcome with this fucking roaring sound that your whole brain shuts down and you just, you're just sort of fighting to survive in that moment. So, the only thing I'm a little worried about is I'm going to say something that someone's going to misconstrue at some point. You know, 
Maybe I'll say something like fucking like racist or something when I don't actually mean it or or sexist or or I don't know like something might come out of my mouth. That's my biggest fear is that I might say something by accident. I don't really mean when I'm in this moment of just trying to survive. So I'm taking a risk because uh, whatever, whatever. Maybe I should do like a, a blue in the background. Oh, then the I gotta. Yeah. Okay. Uh. Uh, yeah, too. Like, there's so many things, thoughts I have. Like, there's like I have lots of political thoughts, but I'm very personal about my political opinions because I think that most people just fucking freak out without understanding anyone's context c c context i've got very most of my close family and friends would be very anti-trump to the point of where it's just so fucking extreme they're they're fucking radicals they're like you know if that if that dude did anything like you know he he, he would save like a, like a, you know a bunch of children from traffic slaving and the, you know it would be like well a clock strikes Twice what's a day or whatever the fuck the phrase is. It's just people are so fucking insane with politics that they've everyone's jumping a shark and and just I think it's like you want to know about fucking Russian collusion or or actor state collusion. That's that's what's happening. You're getting we're getting like bombarded with propaganda to cause civil discourse, and everyone's falling for it because you know I think that's that's part of it. That's a great way to disrupt society is to. Uh, you know, this is like a fucking state actor type, type dirty business. Let's call it. Sometimes it's very obvious. I know a little bit about this. So anyhow, that's why I don't talk about really talk about politics too. Because also the fact is that I don't have the answers. And here's the thing: I really don't put, like people who fucking just talk without really thinking things through. I don't have a lot of respect for people who are just, they just love to hear them, their opinions. I just, you know what? I let them go on and just go for it. But it takes me a very, 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 very long time to, to have an like, opinion about something. For example, I could say that I'm, I'm a libertarian. I, let's say if I said that, I, my point of view on what that means is very different from, I think, probably average, like different people's points of view. You could be like a social libertarian. You could be, you know, fiscally libertarian. You know, and some people would associate it with like anarchy and like no government and just, you know. So the point is, is to me, I don't, I don't speak about these things because they're. That's not how oh, I'm gonna affect the world. I'm not. I'm never gonna be a politician. I'm never gonna be a public speaker. I'm gonna communicate my my feelings and thoughts through artwork, and. Uh, my goal is to try to find, to try to come, out, you know what I want to do with all this stuff I'm doing? I would love to create artwork that touches you at a human level and human nature. And it's a bit more of a throwback to a certain period of time where it wasn't, because, you know, everything goes through, an, not an evolution. Well, evolution here is, 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 is the right word. And people often mistake evolution as progress. Evolution just means change through the, the Darwinistic selective process, right? It doesn't mean it gets better. It's just change. And that's what that's what often happens. So art goes through evolution. And when it goes through a new phase, it doesn't mean necessarily it's better. In fact, I, I think that the pop art movement in the 60s was fucking utter garbage. Like Andy Warhol, I think, is a, a pile of shit. In fact, most of modern art, I think, is absolute utter fucking garbage. <laughs> you know, I, I tried looking at Damon Hurst stuff, and I'm going, get, you know, I, all I can see is like the money signs. You know, and so I think that uh, I, the kind of art that I would like to do might touch you more at a at a at a human basic level. It's not trying to be a fucking edgy. So I'm not going to draw like a bunch of women making out with with blood you know i could do all that shit but th doesn't that bother you doesn't it when you do that don't you feel like you're fucking selling out you're just making some shock value picture you know 
like the painter of figures I respect is Lucian Freud. That fucking guy had talent. And he made something unique and beautiful. And even though there was ugly subject matter, quote unquote, it was still beautiful. Like they made fat people, you know, and just like, you know, the real human bodies and stuff. And that, the, the, it wasn't just the subject matter. He was a talented painter, you know, and each of his brushstrokes, I loved him. So that's what I'm, I'd like to do is if I can somehow tap into that and make something original, fuck, that would be pretty goddamn cool. So I'm doing these... So right now I'm doing these fucking goofy skies and landscapes just because this is what I want to do right now. I'm not trying to make a fucking huge statement. I'm just trying to say, hey, I'm going to tap into something that's genuine. And I'm not I'm not just copying a photograph. You know what I mean? Like, that bugs me to know. And people just go and take photographs and just... Just paint it like that's okay. I mean, I, you know, I don't want to criticize too hard because I for sure have used photographs, you know, absolutely necessary many times. But just the whole the guy, the people who just copy it directly, that's and then they kind of like that's okay. Fuck it. Who am I to criticize? With yeah, I gotta, that's the thing is I don't want to criticize like actual people who are doing art, even though I don't like it, because at least they're trying, you know. At least they're they're putting themselves out there, and it, you know. So I'm gonna always preface the, that that criticism I have for for certain people doing things, and say, okay, fuck it. I still I still very happy they're doing that, and you know, if they were sitting down with me, you know, I'd tell them that for sure. Ah, uh, here I am, just blabbing, blah 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 blah. blah, blah. Okay, Whew. Okay, I made it through something. All right, let's try this. So for those who don't know, I often have to talk. I found one of the things that helps me get through my day with living with this tent of shit is painting and talking. And very often, it's just the act of talking. I think it because it distracts my brain. So I just got to keep on saying that sometimes I don't necessarily mean everything I say. I'm just trying to, like, move into a different headspace. I have to. This is like my therapy. This is literally what I need to do. So I hope I'm forgiven for, for saying politically incorrect things or, or foolish things. Because it, it, it just, it's, honestly, it's just sometimes it's just it's my drug. And I kind of discovered this just through experimenting. I kind of just discovered this. I don't even know how, when I discovered this. Lord, I need it. How about some orange here? Let's throw some orange. Orange and brown. We'll see what happens if I do orange and brown. Okay. I don't even know what it is. It's gorgeous. Oh, thank you. Okay. Oh, what if I do this? What color is that? Oh, that's kind of a nice color. Yeah. Orange and brown. That's a good idea. Found out one of the reasons why I have these stupid allergies. It's because I have a dead nerve and I got to have a root canal. And the dead nerve is related to the nerve that goes up to my, the sinus. So that's awesome. <laughs> but I can't have my root canal until I get my blood sugar down because I got, I found out was it last week? Last week I've got I had I've got diabetes, type two, and my blood sugar was off the sharp, 
chart, and I didn't, I didn't, I never bothered testing my blood sugar before. It was twenty one, and the real. So what I found out is, uh, was you should be at a four to five at a blood sugar, and I was at twenty one, and they gave me a pamphlet, and then it went up to fourteen. <laughs> so for the past, I guess, week or two, I've been really restricted my diet. And I got a little blood tester, and just yesterday, I think I was at a, a 14.7. So I've really been phew, dropping this blood sugar thing down. That has been challenging. But uh, and I think there was that was the reason why I was having all kinds of, you know, it's all, all this shit's in, interrelated. Like, you know, being overweight and then not sleeping well. I've got sleep apnea. <laughs> and then, uh, you know. So I'm taking care of that shit now. I tend to have this propensity to I let things go until it's a real problem and then I fix it. So I'm kind of in the, I'm in the fix it mode. I'm actually feeling much better because I've lost probably I was 293 this morning. So probably some, I probably lost I've been up to two, 350 at one point, so 55 pounds. But just recently, I've lost probably about 10, 15 pounds. And I can already feel it. I already, I sort of, like my stomach seems flatter. You know, I can't rest my, my laptop on, on my stomach anymore and see it. Now I have to hold it. <laughs> I went down like a buckle size. It's good, though. This is what I need to do. I'm kind of looking forward to it. So as soon as I break 290, that's a big milestone. I already, I already know exactly how I feel at different weights. At two, 290, I, I'm not feeling great. At 280, I'm, I'm actually feeling pretty good. At 270, believe it or not, but I feel kind of slim. <laughs> and here's the thing. I The best shape I was ever in, I'm sure I've said this before, best shape I've ever been in, and this is when I was working at six, almost seven days a week, doing martial arts for a few hours a day. I was... Tw uh, 20 in my early 20s i was i wasn't ripped i've never been like ripped ripped but i was fucking in really tight shape man and i was 230 pounds and i looked skinny like my face looked like a rail so i think for me to be down about 250 pounds means i am i'm i'm like a i'm like a a machine if when I'm if I'm two fifty <laughs> i guess because I'm, I'm very i've always been very large like big fucking shoulders right these things are like knock into like door frames all the time you have sleep apnea and we're overweight what are you what are you chanting i'm just fucking rambling about a bunch of bullshit no i have sleep apnea and i'm overweight i'm just rambling cheryl i'm just talking a whole bunch of nonsense right now it should I, you should just turn off the volume because I'm just talking a bunch of bullshit. All right, what do I do here? You had sleep apnea and weren't overweight? What are you chatting? Shame you had sleep apnea. No, I have had sleep apnea for, for a couple years. I My sleep apnea was so bad, they said it could have killed me. I didn't know this. All I knew is that I was exhausted every day. And it turns out I had such severe sleep apnea, I was stopping breathing like 20 or 30 times a night. And part of it is genetic, and definitely part of it was I need to lose weight. I remember I used to wake up going... <gasps> Because I, I literally wasn't breathing. I would stop for like a minute and not breathing. And then I would be woken by myself like I was drowning. It was freaky. And of course, this is before I even, knew, I even heard of sleep apnea. <laughs> yeah, yeah. This is one of my flaws is I'm definitely <laughs> not proactive when it comes to my personal health as much as I should. Stupid, because I'm fucking pretty smart about everything else. Okay. All right. Jesus Christ, why does it have to be such a roller coaster ride? 
<laughs> I wanted to just like to sit down and just chill and enjoy myself. <laughs> okay, something about this is bugging me. I don't know. Do I go blue? Where's my cerulean blue? <laughs> let's just plop this down here. I like this brush, but let's try another one. What would I do? I don't even know what I'm doing. Let's just do this. Uh, I think this painting might be fucked. I might have fucked it. Why is my gut telling me that I fucked it? I kind of feel like something that ain't quite right. <laughs> Here I come to save the day, my G Mouse. <sighs> Definitely got to meditate more, man. I always feel good after you do that. Why don't you do it, you dumbass? Because I'm lazy sometimes. All right, give me a break. All right. Oh, there was another blue I had. Oh, here it is. Where's that blue? It was pretty nice. This is purple. Try not to do purple. What, you know what? Maybe I'll do more brown in the sky. Let's just do some non-traditional colors. I've been too... You paint from emotion like me. Wait. Oh, my God. Lol. No. Keep going. I love it. You paint... Oh, thanks. Raw and beautiful. Yeah, that's like me. I'm raw and beautiful. <laughs> just fucking around. I'm joking. You son of a fucker bastard. I love swimming. Love it. All right. Come here, you. And what was I doing? Oh yeah, the deep blue. Where's that deep blue? I had you. Is this you? Well, this is not you, but this is I could use you. This is like uh what is this? That's like oh that's a nice mid-range blue. I don't know what you're called. You are something. Who knows? The problem is I can tell right away you're a little hard. Yeah, you're a little hard. But that'll make you thick. Actually, I don't mind. I like it. I like it. Oh, that's... See, this is sometimes when paint is working with you. It's, this is like this consistency is really... It grips. It's nice. Okay, let me think about this. I think I need to put the darkness on the other side of the clouds. Yeah, I kind of... They should be over here because yeah, I was thinking about lights coming up. So... I thought I heard a sound like a beeping. Like a dee. There you go. Where is that? Oh, this one. Yes, you are. Goddamn right. Okay. Um. And I'm a also kind of doing this painting for somebody because I'm, I'm not a uh, 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 hmm Maybe a little bit of white in that blue. Let's see. Let's, this is kind of always fun. Is you tap, tap, put some white into your color, and then you can, it, you can see its true color because it's so rich. Looking deep, you could get a sense of like what it's really about. I need some more white. Okay, look at this. All right, so let's just have a look at this. 
That is a beautiful fucking blue. Look at that. Oh, I just reminded myself, myself of something. Back when I drank, like anybody else, and you get hungover on a Sunday. I don't drink anymore. I stopped drinking like, I don't even know, 10 years ago. Just because I just get tired. And it doesn't really, it's not enjoyable anymore. But I used to like watching fishing shows. Like it'd be a Sunday, like 12 noon, and you're waking up. I'm talking like when I was in my 30s and, you know, back in those days. And I used to love watching fishing sh fishing shows because it was the most relaxing thing ever. All that ever happened was these two guys are out in a boat, and it was like this. Oh, that's a beauty fish you got there. Oh yeah, she's a beaut. She's oh look at that. Must be about a three pound muscle lunge. Oh yeah, well look at the dorsal fin on this one. Oh beaut. Okay, let's throw her back. Okay. Then two minutes later, oh look at the fishy guy. She's a beaut. Oh, oh yeah, this is a. Uh, Largemouth bass, They're, they come in the, if you go down into the, there's all kinds of structure down there. Just leave your line out there and, oh, look, oh, look at this one. She's a beaut. <laughs> That's all it was. I don't know why I just said that. <laughs> I had a point somewhere. <laughs> Something about, I don't remember. <laughs> Oh, I know what it was. When I was looking at these colors, I was just thinking, oh, she's, look, oh, you're a beaut. Oh, what a beautiful color. It was exactly kind of like when I, I was looking, at, I was watching the fishing shows. I get like so excited about this little simple thing. Someone catching a fish <laughs> and talking about it literally the same way every single time. I, I never get bored of looking at these little colors and going, oh, that's a beaut. Oh, look at this. Look at this beautiful little red and yellow. Oh, that's a beaut. That <laughs> comes back to, to the fishing show. See, this blue gives me such a different feeling. This is such a, a, a warmer, like, meteor like come and bite in sink your teeth into me kind of a color and this one's more like a standoff kind of like yeah it's it's not even cooler like yellow it's just more like just okay back chill out there just relax a little bit there pal and this one is more of a mm, let's do this thing <sighs> Okay, so I am not at all happy. Okay, I'm looking at my, looking at what I've done so far. There's something wrong, very, very wrong about what I've been doing so far. I'm just going to go in and uh, I need to play with it a bit. You know what? I just, I just, I just need to uh, just ignore what I'm saying. I just need to go through a process of playing. Play, 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 play. And eventually it's going to come out. Something's going to, it's going to be okay. It's going to be okay. It's going to be just fine. It's going to be just fine. It's going to be just fine. Du -du 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 -du. <laughs> I need more white, and then I think I need to bring. Well, hmm. Uh, what do I need to do? What do I need to do to make this thing good? I do not know. I'm speaking with a German accent. I don't know any German. Nein. That's it. Nein, jawohl, jawohl, Herr Kapitän. I think all the German I ever learned was probably from. What was that show with Clink? It was the. It was that comedy show about the World War Two, World War prisoners. K 
Captain's Clink always had the little monocle. And I, I can visualize the, the protagonist, the hero's face. He was like the, the handsome, handsome American, you know, GI. And the caricature of the German soldier was the, was the fat guy. What was that show? Hero, Hero, something Hogan's Heroes? Is that, is that what it was? Hogan's Heroes? I'm not quite sure. Sounds, maybe that's right. Anyhow, who knows what the hell I'm talking about right now. Hogan's Heroes. I think that's what it was. And that's probably where I learned the only few bits of German I know. Nein. Oh, I had a friend. Uh, it's kind of a sad story. I had a friend. I played with him as a kid. Steven. Steven Keston. Right. His family was very, very German. And they had four boys. Steven was my friend. He was my age. But he was kind of a troubled kid. And I remember, I remember going over there for dinner at their house. And you weren't allowed to have water while eating dinner. They had all these, like, rules that were very foreign to me. It's like, can I have a glass of water while we're eating? No. Nope. And I remember his mom was really beautiful. And his dad was really harsh. But his mom was beautiful and strict and nice at the same time. And, and also... Stephen always smelled bad. He had like B.O. or something. Maybe he's just a kid. But anyhow, we kind of grew apart as we became teenagers. I had some good... Um, they had a farm, and we used to go spelunking. Like, we used to go do some crazy fucking stuff. We used to go into these crevices in the ground. They were just cracks and start crawling through and shit. Now it just gives me the heebie-jeebies to even think about what we did. But anyhow, the last time I saw him alive... We were walking, uh, what's that park in St. Clair? Was it, not with Central, oh, uh, I forget, well, Wells Hill Park? Well, the park right at just east of Bathurst, there's a, a park. This is the neighborhood where I grew up in. And myself, I, I, I was with another friend. I think it was with my buddy Nyan, I think. Anyhow, we bumped into Peter. At this point, he was definitely in trouble. He was probably about 17 I'm pretty sure like he was like living on the street and dealing drugs or something something along those lines. I know he got sent away for a, a while somewhere like to like junior prison camp whatever that I mean like whatever whatever you go go to before jail cuz you're too young. I can't remember what it was. It was something something along those lines. Anyhow, we were but we bumped into him and it was nighttime. And I noticed a car coming around the corner and it hopped off the curb and started driving straight for us on the grass in the park and Peter poof, just fucking bolted. And it turns out it was an undercover cop that was like basically watching him or us but it didn't really stay just talk to us. I mean it basically went after Peter and the last I saw him, was the last I ever saw him because he uh, got killed in a, uh, a motorcycle accident. Like he was driving along and just yeah, I don't remember the, I don't know the details, but that was that was it. Peter testing. <laughs> and I remember his older brother, <laughs> his older brother Stephen, had a, kind of a lisp or something. And I remember him being really smart, and he was hugely into kung fu. And I remember he was the kind of guy who would be walking down the street with like a philosophy book, you know, cants or something, and wearing his full black like kung fu outfit. <laughs> and you didn't screw around with Steven because he was like, he was definitely, uh, he was an interesting character. I can still hear his voice in my head. Like he had such a, a distinct voice. Steven Kesting. And I think even to this day, he does like kung fu or teaches it or or does something like some kind of martial art thing. Yeah, I think he was like some like like brilliant 
guy who's into philosophy or something. I, I, that's kind of what I recall. And he had, I think he had one or two younger brothers, but they were young and I remember them. Man, I used to play with that guy all the time. We used to do all kinds of ridiculous stuff. We used to just, we would, we would do a lot of things like exploring the city and like going places we shouldn't. I'm just trying to think of some of the things we did. Like I remember the, oh yeah, <laughs> at this farm, that was so much fun. They had an old crummy old barn with big bales of hay and they had like a rope with a big like metal hook thing and we used to like there'd be like a big it was like you know my mind is probably not accurate anymore but we were kids we were pretty young uh like tweens or something and we would climb up these bales of hay i just remember them being really i remember the smell and how dirty and the hay would, would have get down your shirt and stuff so we climbed these cool things and have like for 10 wars and then we would grab it and swing like fucking Tarzan to another side of the barn and then like wipe out all the, on the hay and stuff. And I remember his mom and his mom would always be yelling at us like, you know, what are you guys doing? Stop doing whatever it is you're doing. <laughs> okay, so I'm purposely doing a little bit of lines here. You know what it reminds me of? I, I, I got the little Van Gogh love in me. So a little bit of that is sort of Van Gogh. I'm doing that. And uh, yeah, screw that. That's what I'm doing. I still, still, this whole thing needs to be brought together more. Oh, does this look like a big wave? <sighs> Water. That's kind of cool. That's kind of cool. So I don't care that it's not. This thing is not realistic. Like this is a very Van Gogh thing to do, just to be bold and put some like hard lines in here, like. I'm probably going to get rid of them because it's too much what he would do. And, yeah, I, I'm, I'm probably going to kill that because I, I just, you know, Van Gogh did it. I can't, I can't really, uh, I can't be that obvious. So I like to do a couple of these little squiggly lines, which I got the idea from de Leon Rodin and Chagall kind of. They kind of just had some fun messing with the brush really going like that so i've been doing that for a little while just for fun maybe maybe i have to bring, bring some of the maybe i need to some of that green in there why not I like that wave. Okay, see, I don't like those little blue lines I just added, the little Van Gogh things. So I'm kind of thinking I'm just going to try just using that color a little bit to see where it goes. Did I screw this up a bit? Maybe I screw this up a bit. Uh, I'll fix that later. <sighs> okay, I'm just take a little, a little step back. I wonder if I, I might need a break. I don't know if I've if I'm, I'm doing this. Like subconsciously, but after about an hour, which it feels like, it feels like about an hour, I kind of like, I suddenly become drained of energy. I become tapped out. I can tell you without a shadow of a doubt, it is more effort for me to do this live stream thing. Because like, I can't really relax. If I'm doing this normally, as I normally paint, I'd be lying in my bed. I might just like, go surf the internet. I might like play with my dog. I might like do, do anything, go get a drink, go to the washroom. But here, I, I, like in the back of my mind, I, I feel like, you know, I have to be sitting in this chair. And if I walk away, then, then, then you know, that's kind of stupid. Like it's just a blind screen. So I think this is sort of a little bit more taxing on me than 
I can't I can't be as more productive, I think. I think it sucks my my energy flow, whatever you want to call it, more. So yeah. Cause like in the past, I literally could go for five, six, seven hours straight. Like I could keep on rocking. Um, but that's when I get to, that's when I get to be me. Like I, I literally would be like, I'd be walking around naked and I'll have like paint smeared across like my face. I don't give a shit. I go grab a banana and like, nom, nom, nom. oh, I don't know. And then I'd walk over, slap something on here and then walk back. You know, that's, that's really what I would, you know, I'm kind of missing that. I'm kind of missing that privacy where I don't have to worry about a, a camera. <sighs> So I have been thinking about like doing some painting without this weird documentation thing I'm doing right now. It may it may happen, but here's the thing. Also, too, like I gotta I, one thing I suck at is like marketing. I just it makes my skin crawl to even think about. So this is this is my attempt at like marketing. My opening up myself to the world in a way. I can't deal with galleries. I don't have the energy to deal with that part of the art world. It just, it's just, I, I gotta, this is, I gotta accept the fact that I may never be a, a successful artist because I'm not a salesperson. I'm the opposite of a salesperson. I, I run away from it. I literally have had people ask, inquire about paintings, and I fucking just run away from it. I can't do that. I try hard. I try hard to, like, you know, and people, it, it, you can't understand it, what it's like. It sounds so ridiculous because, yeah, I just need someone else to do it, deal with that. Or maybe, maybe part of it is, too, is I need to separate – you know what? Fuck! It. I'm doing a good job of what I'm doing. Fuck it! I'm, I'm you know, I got, I got to do it. I just got to do what I got to do. All right. I just got to do this. This is what I have to do. I'm doing the right thing right now. This is what I have to do. That's kind of a weird. Okay, I don't, I don't think necessarily I like this. Sun. I almost never do suns. Because I always think they might be too hokey pokey, you know, smoky. Okay. Excuse my hair. Oh, sneezing is, I love it. Okay. What about this? This is a nice little orange. Just bring this orange and see what happens if I do here. It's just, there's definitely just a bit of like radiance that I need to bring in. Which, uh, uh, yeah, it's like a little bit dull here, so maybe, ooh, I, I don't know if I want yet oranges, no, that's not what I want. I don't know why, why, normally I would. Nose is so itchy. <coughs> what can 
kind of color is that going to be that brown brown blue let's try brown blue oops that was bad maybe I'll add brown right into the mix let's just do that More green. Let's add some green in there. Oh my. Oh my god. Brown, green. I want to stop. I'm not done this. I still want to do more. I just, uh, I think I just need to take a break. I don't think I've eaten today. What time is it? 12.30. No, I haven't eaten yet. Maybe it's like a low blood sugar thing. Who knows? Okay, so I need to, yeah, should I take a break? God, I wish I could just keep going right now. I wonder how I should do this. Maybe this thing should be more than forefront. This is another island kind of thing. So put rounds. It's kind of interesting. Okay. What's up, Wesley? Okay, this one. Yeah, I'm gonna um, take a breather. I'm trying to really just rip this off. Okay. Yeah, it's definitely not quick there. Not quick there. <sighs> I could even just leave it. I don't know. Huh. I don't know. Okay, well, maybe we'll just stop. Yeah, I'll stop and come back and... Oh, yeah, I can see where it's a little goofy. If you look, this hill... Oh, yikes. Wrong color. So nice having the screen to look at it, because I can see the composition so much better up on the screen. What I think I didn't do... Properly, it's kind of like this thing. And there's almost like another little hill that comes down there. I could bring that one up a bit to match it. Yeah, and even too, like over here, this probably can afford to be more like this one. Yeah. Snort, 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 sniffle, sniffle.
Okay, I'll just stop here. We'll see what it looks like after a little while. I think um, it might be okay to take a picture now. If I take a picture now, the light is a little muted and it's going to be a little on the cool side because of the way the light is. There's a lot of snow outside, so there's going to be a lot of that. The, it'll be more blue shifted. So for me, for me to take a photograph, what else? I'll take my iPhone and take my tripod, uh, take one of these display easels, put it outside. I take about five or six, seven shots in, in different angles. Then I got to bring into Photoshop. I got to adjust the uh, aspect ratio. And then I got to tweak the levels, which is usually, you know, levels is just one of the tools in Photoshop. allows you do the, 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 the darkness ranges. So you might select the highs, mids, lows, and move them up and down to try to approximate what, um, how it looks like in real life. I don't know how other people do it, but I have a lot of experience in Photoshop. I've been using it for since 1991 when it first came out. So I, I've been I'm definitely an expert in Photoshop. So I don't know how other people do it because they have to pay someone to do it. That's that would be, suck. First time I used Photoshop was when I was living in Japan. So it would have been 94 around there and I found this person who was this artist who was doing digital art ah, he spoke no English and I spoke a tiny bit of Japanese and all of Photoshop was in Japanese like all the so so uh, and that's when I first got my first game development job I met a German dude Herman the German everyone called him who had a and I was like I worked on this game he did this 2d video game and that's right, even when I was working on German, uh, Herman's game, I was using Photoshop and everything was in Japanese. So I had to learn all of the, the icons and stuff. You know, like if you look at it, everything is like, not, not icons, like the file, you know, file, save as. Everything was, it was, was, was kind of, kind of uh, characters. And so I did not learn the katakana or, or what is it katakana? No, katakana is the English one. It's, I forget. Kanji. I didn't learn the kanji. I just learned where where everything was located. So I've been using Photoshop for a long time. I think I actually still I have a I think I that dude, that Japanese dude, gave me a copy of one of his art pieces. And even then I didn't really consider art because he did it digitally. I was thinking, is this real art? And that guy was probably a pioneer. I gotta try to find that. I have a box of like a memento box of of Japan somewhere, where I I, I kept the letters. Uh, the student people wrote me. People wrote me a lot of letters, and uh, I have like some like Japanese stuff. I don't even know what they were. They're like you know ceremonial things. Like there'd be like a big, not big. There'd be like a some sort of nice thick paper stock with tassels on it and some sort of character on it and i have no idea what the hell they mean but i was given all kinds of these things as gifts so i have no idea where my box of japanese stuff is anyhow maybe i'll find it one day okay so thanks for watching this first draft what should we call this thing the wave <laughs> anyhow it's not grabbing me right now I need to, oh, by the way, it looks much better here than, than what you're seeing. The colors are way more vivid. Like this, this orange and yellow is like, and then I look on the screen, it's just all muted and bleh. And these blues are beautiful up here. So there's some good things about it. I like, I like these little line drawings that I just, I didn't even think about what, that's sometimes the best thing about paintings. You just don't even think about it. Like I did, that's kind of nice, isn't it? Look at the little billowing little lines curving and coming and flowing. And then these little streaks. This down here, oh my God, it looks so much better than there. That's not bad. This is all blah still. I like where it started playing and adding little flip, 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 flops. And then here, I don't know, but down here is succalicious. Still craptastical. It needs work. Okay, I'm shutting up now. See you in a little bit.